Welcome to Sales Mastery. I'm your host, Anna Scheller, and my guest today is Mark the Sales Hunter. Mark is a prospecting master and is going to be talking about important topics like how to get people to open up your prospecting emails and what to do in those slow times. Join us for this amazing episode. Welcome to Sales Mastery on the amazing Women of Power radio station. I'm your host, Anna Scheller, and it is my passion to help you develop mastery through the programs that we bring you here on Sales Mastery. You know, mastery is a process. It would be nice if we all were the top salespeople within the first few weeks that we start. But the, the truth of the matter is that mastery is an ever-growing, ever-evolving learning process. And you have to stay, you have to stay in training. You have to stay coachable. You have to be willing to read and learn. And so that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here to help you with guests, with content, and most of all to encourage you on your journey so that you can master sales, make the money that you want to make, and live the life of your dreams. Now, you can find me at AnnaScheller.com. That's Anna with two N's, Scheller, S-C-H-E-L-L-E-R. And you can learn more about me, read my blogs. More importantly, you can find out about these broadcasts that happen every single week on the Amazing Women of Power radio station. So go to AnnaScheller.com. Anna with two N's, S-C-H-E-L-L-E-R. Now, speaking of masters, I have with me in the studio today, Mark Hunter, whom I call the prospecting master. Mark, welcome to, Bla uh, not Black Belt Selling, it's Sales Mastery. I'll get them all mixed up. Hey, that's okay. Hey, <laughs> thank you for having me on today. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with Mark, Mark is the author of High Profit Selling and High Profit Prospecting. And I have to tell you that Mark's book on prospecting has become my prospecting Bible. When I'm not sure what to do, I go look and I read up and then I implement. And you know what? It works. Everything he tells you works. But it's just like everything else that you're going to master. You have to actually do it. You have to be patient with the results and you have to keep at it. So um, I'm actually in one of Mark's coaching groups, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, you, you sure are. Thank you. Thank you for and, being part of it. Well, I enjoy it. I always learn a lot, not just from you, Mark, but from the others. And um, just for our listening audience who, now you've been a regular, you've been on, you're becoming a regular on Sales Mastery, which I'm grateful for. Um, but today we're going to be talking about email marketing, which is probably one of the biggest areas that people feel they should be getting more traction in. And we're also going to be talking about what do you do when the time of year when people don't seem to be around to answer your phone calls, like summertime. And actually, we're going to be looking at another uh, slow time here, not very far in the future. So we want to help you today to start to build some of those strategies that are going to help you create more regular cash flow in your business. And, you know, if you want to take that vacation in the Bahamas, you actually will have a plan that you can count on the cash flow to do it. Right, Mark? You got it. Because you got to go out and sell something first before you can do anything. That's right. That's right. That's so right. So, um, Mark, first of all, let me ask, why are you so passionate about prospecting? I mean, why not something else about sales? <laughs> that's a good question. You know, I, I, I think I'm passionate about because it's something that so many people struggle with and really what it comes down to. I'm just really passionate about sales because uh, I, I didn't wake up, you know, I'm known as the sales hunter, but I, I, I was not born a salesperson by any means. And uh -huh. it took me years to kind of morph into it. But I'm so passionate about it now. And the area that people struggle in the most is prospecting. They just struggle with, <gasps> they hyperventilate. I mean, yeah. uh, the number of phone calls exactly. and conversations I have almost every day is amazing of talking somebody off the cliff. And I think the biggest reason why people don't stay in sales is uh -huh. because of prospecting. So that's why it's really, it's my passion. And I happen to think, prospecting is absolutely a kick in the pants uh, because it, it's, it's not the big 
bogeyman that everybody makes it out to be. It really is not that hard. It's a series of conversations. And let me jump down the path for just a second. Sure. It really comes down to this. If you believe in the outcome that you can provide people with, you know, if you, if you believe in the outcome you can provide people with, don't you want to get, don't you want to have that conversation with people? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, we're coming up on football season and that means everybody starts talking about whether it be their college team or their pro team, whatever. And, and, and people are passionate. What do they do? They talk to everybody, including their, their chief rival regarding, you know, how good their team is. Exactly. Yeah. Shouldn't that same thing be happening in sales because of the outcome that you, you know, what does the team provide you with the team? You know, I, I don't see a Jersey on you. I don't have a Jersey on me no. and, and, <laughs> and yeah, it, it just didn't work out. So anyway, I mean, uh, uh, so he, here's the whole thing that the outcome is the satisfaction we get from really enjoying and, and, and really um, following and connecting with our team. Gee, mm -hmm. isn't that one of the big outcomes that we provide people with when they buy from us? We're able to connect with them. We're able to create this connect and, and we're able to help them see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. See, that's why you got to get out and prospect. It's, I love it. It doesn't fit. Rejection does not fade. Rejection is a moment in time. It's never permanent. Whoa, you just said it. Okay, okay. I'll show <laughs> well, you know, we're going to get to that because it's so, so important. Um, and I love how you said that if you believe in what you're selling, then you want to get out and talk about it. I mean, really, it, it is the truth. If yeah, you and, 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 yeah, and, yeah, and you know ahead. what, though? Let, let's jump ahead on that one because it's, it's not just believing in what you sell. It's believing in the outcome that you deliver outcome, from what you yes, sell. Exactly. Because, I mean, you know, I, I, I hear this comment, and I'm sure you hear it too. Well, if I only had something decent to sell, I know I could be better. Oh, yeah. well, no, it's not. It's no, it's the outcome. It's the outcome. I go to some restaurants where the food is really lousy. I mean, the food is really lousy. Uh huh. But I love going there because the outcome from the wait staff and everybody is just so, it's an over the top experience. Ah, ah, yeah. Ah, you see, it's the outcome. It's the outcome. It wasn't, it wasn't the food. Yeah. Well, you know, and that reminds me, I think it's a story you've told about Zig Ziglar. You want to share that story? That's a, that's really a, that really, really, I think. Well, yes. In terms of illustrates yeah, that when he was just beginning in sales, he was selling pots and pans door to door. I, is, is this the story? Yes. That's the yes, one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you think about it, selling pots and pans, excuse me, how excited can you get selling pots and pans? But he became successful when he wasn't focusing on the pots and pans, but mm -hmm. he, came, he became successful on focusing on the meal that they were going to prepare, the experience, the family, what this was going to do for the homemaker, what was, you know, all, all of the things regarding the lifestyle that mm -hmm. the pots and pans were going. That's what he focused on. When he focused on that, that's when he became, see, focused on the outcome, not the product. Oh, it's a pot. It's a pan. It's got a handle on it. <laughs> uh, well, excuse me. Every, every, you know, every pot has a handle. He focused on the outcome. He focused on the outcome. Yeah. That, that changes everything about why you want to prospect. I, you know, and I've learned so much from you just in the few months that I've been coaching with you. But um, one of the things that I think is a really big challenge for a lot of salespeople, and they use it as a default and then they figure, well, if they don't answer me, they're not interested. And that is email, email. And um, so I want to cover a couple of topics, yeah. topics let's if that's go, okay. Let's, go. Let's, yeah. let's dive in. One, what do you think is the biggest challenge that people have when it comes to email prospecting? Oh, you mean I have to narrow it down to one because there's so many, but <laughs> hey, hey, you, you know, really, I, I, I'm going to say it's two. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. going to cheat. I'm going to cheat because I'm the guest. I, I get to write the rules. You, you um, get to write yeah, the rules. Yeah. One is over-reliance on email. People think that's the only way to prospect. So that, that's, uh, that's yeah. rule. Yeah, okay. For but sure. the, the big one is that we write the prospecting email sitting at, at our computer, desktop, laptop, whatever. And wow, it looks really good. And then, and then the problem is the person gets it on their smartphone and it looks pretty lousy. You know, and that, that, I mean, just, I mean, 
I don't think anybody wants to get a five page thesis oh, no. prospecting email. No. But I'll tell you what, that's what some people are sending out. Give me a break. Because if you don't capture their attention in the, you know, that subject line and that first sentence, so critical. Don't waste it by saying, just checking in or did you get my phone call? Did you get my, oh, wow. oh man, that is so bad. And then the first sentence yeah. would go, hi, my name is, and, I, and I'm that, 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 that. I saw, I saw a prospecting email the other day. This just absolutely, absolutely blew me away. It was forwarded to me. It wasn't sent to me. It was forwarded to me from someone. And this guy for three sentences said, I've done this, 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 and this. That was the first paragraph. And the second paragraph is, I'm going to be in your area. I would like to meet with you. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> Give me a break. It's all about him. Yeah. And you know, and, and that's something that's really, really critical. And I want to talk about the subject line here because, because we do tend to talk a lot about ourselves and we tend to come at our sales from our own perspective. So the reason I got into sales may not be the reason somebody else needs sales training. Um, and so, but let's talk about the subject line because the subject line often is um, just checking in with you or um, I have this great product for you or I have fabulous news for you or something like that. So what, what, what do we need to do to get our subject line to capture their attention to where they're not going to go delete, delete, delete? Yeah. Will you win the lottery? I have pictures of you. No, no, no. I'm kidding. No, no, no. no. I mean, it, it, you know, the, the whole thing is you have to have a subject line that is of interest to the person. And believe me, they didn't wake up. You know, nobody woke up this morning and said, oh, man, I hope I get a prospecting email from Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. They, they, no, sorry. Nobody woke up with that. Nobody woke up with that. So if I'm going to send out a prospecting email. I got to send out a prospecting email that has a subject line. It's going to interest them. It's got to be on the, on, in their circle, their world. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be short. It's got to be tight. It's got to be not, none of these like, you know, 18. Oh man. Oh, don't, don't get me going because I mean, some of these subject lines, they go on forever. Hi, we, da, 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 da. And because think about this. All the person sees on their smartphone is probably the first 50 or 60 characters. Right. So if you write this long subject line and the meat is in the back end, the only person that's going to get the meat is going to be the trash bin because they're yeah. going to delete it before they even read it. So let's, um, well, let's, let's bring up some kind of an example. So um, let's say that um, you're talking to a manufacturing company. Yeah. And um, you've done a little bit of research. We don't want to do too much research because – Correct me if I'm wrong, but we can get caught up in, oh. it's, it becomes a way of procrastinating making the call, right? Oh, yeah. You know what? I just, I just got to, I just got to check that. Let me just check this out. Let me just check. Oh, let me watch this cat video. Oh, look at this great cat video. Oh, look at this great cat video. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. and, and yeah, and, and, and you wind up, re oh, I, I'm out of time to prospect. I'll have, I'll have to try them tomorrow. And then, and, and so what, what happens is, you know, you only wind up thinking about prospect. Well, let me tell you something. Thinking about prospecting is not prospecting not because prospecting. your prospect is not thinking about you. Ooh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm getting, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm starting to get wound up here. Anyway, yes, uh, it, it, you've got to have a, say you're sending to a manufacturing firm, okay? And, and, right. and, and we'll say that what you sell is, is transportation services, okay? So it, it might be something like, 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 you know, rate, you know, transportation rate changes, coming in the fourth quarter, you know, transportation rate changes. Okay. That's all they're going to see. Okay. They'll, that's going to, that's going to interest me or, or new safety rigs or, or whatever it might be, or price of fuel is going up, or maybe they have, maybe you sell labor, you know, you know, labor shortage, but you, you, you've got to key in on what is going to be of interest to them. Because once they see the subject line, you've got mm -hmm. to draw them down to, you know, maybe the first 200 characters that they're okay. going to see in the email. So don't waste it introducing yourself. Oh, right. man. Right. I see right. those and I go, delete, delete. Because you know what? You may want to meet me, but I really could care less about meeting you. Ooh, I'm, I'm getting harsh. I'm sorry. Wow. 
Man. Well, that is not your style, Mark. I have to tell you, you're always very affable, and but you can tell Mark is very energetic. And well, I, yeah, I, you know what, and, and 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 I say this because I, I really want I want people to to succeed. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's just it, it, there's no reason there's no reason for people to fail. It just pains me when I see people struggling selling. It pains me. Yeah, and and you know, one of the things I want to say that I've really learned a lot from you, Mark, is that. You know, it's a conversation. That's why you want to get their attention. That's why, um, that's why you want to, to really engage them right away because your time is valuable. Their time is valuable. There's no sense in wasting their time or yours with emails because it's not necessarily a numbers game. I've been taught that for a long time. It's a numbers game. If you send out enough emails, somebody is going to respond back. And I know that's a strategy that some companies use, but, um, you know, how does that relate to email? Is that effective? No, because you know what? I, if, if I send a bad email to one person, it's a bad email. If I send that bad email to 100 people, now I've sent 100 bad emails. And, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's all that really happened. I mean, really, it is. I mean, it, it's not. I mean, it, so, yeah, for some, you know, a, even a blind squirrel will find it an occasional acorn. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I just threw squirrels under the bus. Uh, but you know, I, I no, it, this whole game, if I just send out enough emails and what you're really hoping for is that you throw out enough breadcrumbs and somewhere along the line, somebody's hungry and going to reach down and grab a breadcrumb and they're going to think of you that that's really what you're hoping for. And, 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 that's, and that's just, like, yeah. 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 And you're not even really memorable because you know, for, for whatever reason, for whatever reason. Um, now, one strategy that you talk about is to promote industry expertise. What do you mean about that? Well, yeah, because think about this. It, if you want, so many customers get turned off because the salespeople, they feel salespeople don't understand them and their business. So yeah. if I can come in and I can communicate some information regarding your industry, regarding what's happening, mm -hmm. wow, then you're not quite seeing me as a salesperson, but you're seeing me as an industry peer. What does that do? That gets a much better discussion going. And, you know, this thing called the internet, I, I've heard it's catching on and, and I think it's going to go oh, places. I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah I, it's, it's still a little sus, it's still a little sketchy, but, yeah. but um, I, it's an amazing tool. You can get any kind of research you want in 30 seconds or less. I mean, it, it's me. So all I have to do is have, have one piece of information and mm -hmm. I can run with it. And, and that's why I, I, I love when I'm prospecting, I prospect by industry. You, mm -hmm. you stay focused on industry because you develop that expertise. So it might be, you know, Tuesday, I'm in this industry. Wednesday, I'm in this industry. Thursday, I'm, I'm, I'm in this industry. Mm -hmm. And wow, it just helps you feel so much smarter. Well, and, and your, you know, your buddy, Anthony Anarino, he's been on my, our show, lovely guy, I'm going to get him back. And um, Anthony says that we've for so long been subservient, but we really need to come in as peers. Yes. We need to come in as really um, a trusted advisor. And a trusted advisor is not, is not the dog asking for crumbs. It's the the person that sits at the table and says, you know, I've been looking at what's going on here and I see that you've got this issue, this issue, this issue, and I've been looking at these parameters for you. This is what I recommend based on what you're going through. And this is, and then, then my solution is not about um, making money. My solution is about your solution. My solution is about your business. You know, it, it, um, that changes everything around. And, and what that does. does also is the bigger the company, the more you have to be seen as a peer, the, you know, yeah. the bigger the company, because big companies don't want to deal with little kids. They don't have time for them. No. So don't no, come in and, and play this. No, you got to come, you got to come in. You got to come in as a peer. When they, when they see you as a peer, then they're going to begin to respect you. Now, let me ask you this question too. Um, and there's, we could just spend the entire half hour just on email marketing, but I really do want to talk about what do we do when things are slow. But the last thing I want to ask you about is what about links and, you know, should I send them to a link? Um, it, what's the deal with that? Or should I leave them out? Yeah, I, I, I am not a big fan of that. Now, after I've been trying to reach you 10 times so forth, then I may get desperate. I may put a link in, but I don't want to because here's all the thing. What does a link do? 
A, it, it can gum up an email system. Okay. Yeah. So boom, it, it, it'll move you suddenly to the spam, to the spam folder and you yeah. are never seen again. Exactly. B, you actually take them away from your message and now what can happen is they can get all their questions answered without ever talking to you. What's the objective of the email? The objective of the email is to create a discussion. Yeah. On this thing called the telephone. Hey, amazing. It's an amazing tool. That's, <laughs> exactly. that's what you want the email to do. So my fear is that I send them to a link and who knows, like I said, this, this internet thing is catching on. They're, they're going to wind up going all over the place. Yeah. And you know, we also have social media uh, to get information as well. The good, the bad and the ugly, but it's there. Oh, and it's, it's there. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. It has, it's, yeah. it's actually, I think, superseded a lot of things in terms of there were things that were five years ago popular for prospecting and such now, you know, really need to be. But the same principles apply to social media, wouldn't you say? The same principles apply. All we're doing is changing the vehicle. That, that's, yeah. all, that's all. There's nothing that's changed regarding prospecting. I mean, mm -hmm. really, if you stop and think about it, all that's changed is the vehicle delivery method. That's all that's changed. And then what that does is it changes the cycle, changes the cadence. That's it. That's it. Yeah. It's still about creating a one-to-one -one relationship mm -hmm. based on trust and integrity. Now, speaking of, so there's, now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to know that there is so much more to this topic than what we're talking about. And I want to really encourage you to get Mark's book, High Profit Prospecting. There it is. Um, it's on Kindle. Uh, have you got it on Audible yet? Cause yes. Oh, yeah. It, it is on Audible. But I didn't, I didn't do the audio. When, when, when we did Darn. the book two years ago, or this was, no, this was just a little over a year a ago. A year ago, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was so busy. I just couldn't break free enough to be able to do the audio. So, but it's done by a class gentleman. He does a great job. So the audio version is excellent. I, I think he does me better than me does me. But that's a different story. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that. But I really do encourage you, if, if this is an area that you struggle in, the other thing you need to do is get a coach. You know, you can talk to Mark. You can talk to me. I help people with prospecting. And um, I'll tell you the reason I help people with prospecting, because I'm like everybody else. Sometimes picking up the phone, I have to tell myself it's the right thing to do. I would rather do something else. But we all have to do it. Now, we only have about a little over five minutes, so we really want to talk about selling seasons because, because it can be very discouraging if you're not aware of selling seasons and what you can do while people are on vacation or, or whatever. So yeah. address that, Mark. Yeah, there, there are really two main selling seasons a year. You know, we have winter, you know, we have four seasons. No, uh, no, everybody has five seasons because they always put road construction in there as a fifth season. So anyway, anyway, but that, that's, that's in every state, but New Hampshire, they don't work on roads, but no, whoa, I just, I just offended somebody in New Hampshire. And anyway, um, they do in Alaska though. Oh, oh, they do. Hey, yeah. I, I, I used to live in Alaska. They have six seasons there because they have road construction and they have breakup, but that's a whole separate, that's a whole separate. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, those of you who live in Alaska, you know what breakup is anyway. Okay. Um, Selling season, two main selling seasons. The, the first one is from about the middle of January to about late April and maybe the first week of May. What that is, this is a time when a lot of people are making buying decisions. They're buying, you know, they've come back from the holidays, things are geared up, it's that second, third week of January and things get going. And, and this is when a lot of salespeople make a lot of their, and then you get down towards the latter part of April and you know, summer and all that stuff just spring, it, all that stuff just begins to kick in and and ah, it's harder to get people together for meetings and we kind of go into this lag. And then we have the second selling season, which really happens, the official, the official first day of selling season two is the day after Labor Day. But you know, sometimes it's the middle of August, but, but, but anyway, it's kind of when school goes back into session, depending on where you are, you know, in the States. And, and, and it's because people are back in the groove. And then that kind of goes to about the middle of November. And then it's like, it's the holidays. Oh, well, you know what? We'll just talk about it after the first year. Why don't we talk about it in January? You know, yes, there's the, there's the spurt for some industries that occur mm -hmm. in December as people are spending cash and so forth. But by and large, the selling season is kind of, so what this means is right now, I mean, we're on the verge of selling season. You've got to be using July and August as heavy up 
prospecting. This is, people say, I can't prospect during the summer because nobody's around. Yeah, but you know what? That's what your competition said. So guess what? They're not prospecting. Right. I love prospecting during the summer months because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get appointments. And, and people say, well, you know, why don't we wait till after Labor Day when everybody's back and we could get a meeting? No, 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 no. You sit there and say, hey, you know what? You're right. People aren't going to be back. But why don't you and I meet? Why don't we meet? Mm -hmm. Get that initial. Don't wait for the group to get together. Don't. No, this is what I stalls. Know. A lot of people have an initial prospecting call and, and it goes well. And then you got to go to that second phase where you get that group meeting. Well, we'll wait till after. Well, let's wait till the middle part of it. Let's wait till everybody comes back from vacation in September. We'll look at calendars. No, grab a meeting right then with at least one or two of those players. You've got to, you've got to keep things in motion because here's why. When you're selling in August, September, you're not quite sure if this is going to be current fiscal year or next fiscal year. You right. see, and you know, yes, you want to get this current fiscal year. I certainly get that, but you may not, you really haven't vetted the customer enough. So what you got to do is you got to get far enough along that if it does go next fiscal year, that they have time to put it in their budget for next fiscal year. If you wait and be making these phone calls in, in middle of October, latter part of October, guess what? Uh, budgets are probably far enough along that maybe it's, it's those commitments are already made for next year. This right. right now is when you're doing your prospecting for, for next year. Yeah. Huge. Now, it, it's, it's not that you're doing the prospect. You do the prospecting now because you got to get the sale made so that they get it in the budget. Well, you know what? I can't fund it all this year. I got to fund part of it this year and part of it next. F fine. I don't care. I don't care. I take money on both years. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'll take double. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and so this is not a time. So if you're, and especially if things are quiet around the office, you know, you don't have the customer care that you have to be constantly on top of. So use this time, use this time productively and don't get discouraged if the sales aren't coming in. What will happen is, is you work this as you prospect, as you reach out and you, you touch people with your marketing. What's going to happen is, is you're going to create fewer uh, peaks and valleys in your sales. And that's what you want because none of us wants to look at Christmas, stare down Christmas and go, I don't have money now to buy kids the gifts or we don't have the money to go travel to visit family or whatever. So this, these are strategies that you can implement now and you say, well, Anna, but Mark, I haven't been doing that. Um, but let's get started now. Don't yeah, worry about right, what's happened right, because right. maybe, maybe it'll take a few weeks for you mm. to get some traction. But if you don't start now, you're never going to get traction. You got you know, get traction. You know, whenever somebody says, you know, it's been slow this month, the, the question I always ask them is, how much prospecting did you do last month and the month before? Exactly. You know, th this, I mean, when, when business is slow, it's because you didn't do prospecting the month before, the quarter before, you know, whatever it is with your sales cycle. Hey, peaks and valleys are great for mountain climbing and downhill skiing. They're terrible for sales. <laughs> exactly. Just exactly. Well, um, any last words before we close the show for the day? Sales is absolutely fun when you focus on the outcome that you're going to provide your customer. Put the scripts aside. Scripts are for plays. Conversations are for sales. It's, it's, it's real. I thoroughly love sales because it's, it's connecting with people. I love it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you for joining me again. I really want to encourage you get Mark's book, high profit prospecting, get on his mailing list because um, you, he sends out every Wednesday, he sends out great content for you to read and look at. And now, Mark, you're doing LinkedIn live. And oh, we're doing, doing, we're, um, we're doing all, all kinds, kinds of, cool of stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, so, yeah, let's, let's, let's uh, pitch the website. It's thesaleshunter.com. Yeah. Thesaleshunter.com. The sales you know, when you got the last name of Hunter, you might as well use it. So you're right. So right. a lot of market research went in. That was the domain name that was available. Okay. It's done. It works. There you go. There you go. So again, I want to thank you for joining me today on Sales Mastery on the amazing Women of Power radio station. Tune in every Thursday at 1030 Central Standard Time in the morning for Sales Mastery on the amazing Women of Power radio station. Make it a great day.